When we talk about ibrutinib and acalabrutinib, it's important to understand that their primary mechanism of action is the inhibition of BTK. When we talk about how the two agents differ, it does appear that acalabrutinib is more selective for BTK, whereas we can see some other, more in the way of off-target effects with uh, ibrutinib. Uh, how much that plays into benefit, how much that plays into toxicity are still unknowns. I, I, and and I, again, we just need to follow patients with a calibrutinib longer, generate the follow-up data, and if it looks like truly this is a better tolerated agent, then, then great. Then that's a wonderful thing to, to be able to take the patients. Alternatively, as I, as I mentioned, if they turn out to be very similar in terms of, you know, atrial dysrhythmias, in terms of, um, you know, bruising or bruisability and the like, then, then I think we just have to, you know, take a step back and, and you know, uh, maybe uh, agree that there may not be much of a difference. Listen to what I'm saying. That's okay. And, and I think that's the take-home message. <coughs> if they turn out to be similar in benefit and risk, guess who wins? The patient. Because now one insurer or one, you know, pharmacy, whatever, is uh, group benefit manager, would, uh, I apologize if I'm butchering their names, but they're going to get a cheaper drug from one group versus another, and that's, that's good. We need competition. Competition isn't going to hurt anyone. It's just going to push, honestly, both companies to develop their drugs in novel ways and to try and price their drugs in ways that patients can um, better afford. So, so acalabrutinib is a more specific uh, BTK inhibitor as compared with um, uh, Ibrutinib. The studies, I mean, the first, so 12 months follow up with acalabrutinib was presented at ASH last year and this was updated this year. And so the overall response rate and the complete response rate are initially, we say, seems to be, although you know, you cannot, you need to do a face. Uh, a uh, head-to-head uh, -head comparison, but there was excitement because uh, we are seeing better overall response rates, better complete response rate, less side effects. That was last year. But to tell you the truth, I think that we need to wait and see, you know, two or three or four years follow-up in order to say this drug is, because it's more specific, right, acalabrutinib, Perhaps it's more potent, and perhaps it's associated with less side effects. So I think that is a good drug, but in order for any of us to say one is better than the other, so I think that we need to, to wait. And for instance, um, in the update of the acalabrutinib data in 2018, yes, we start to see episodes of hemorrhage, episodes of bleeding. Uh, there is no report of atrial fibrillation, but there are report of other uh, cardiac events in the follow-ups. Again, as the data matures, then we're going to be able to say, so what are the differences or not between the ibrutinib, acalabrutinib, and also other type of bruton tyrosine kinases that are being assessed. So senobrutinib is an uh, interesting BTK inhibitor that uh, has shown that bind better uh, or for a prolonged period of time or, or is sustained uh, as compared with uh, the other two BTK inhibitors. Uh, so you hear my comments about acalabrutinib, so two years uh, follow-up presentation. I think so this drug is still in earlier development. And there were two presentations at us. So one of a clinical trial conducted in China and the other one uh, a global clinical trials in which, again, so we see a very good overall response rate, very good CR rate. Uh, I think in terms of safety, uh, we are seeing similar uh, side effects compared with the others, although uh, it's still early to say, but seems to be more incidence on some pulmonary events with this uh, uh, new class of BTK inhibitor. So I will summarize by saying, yes, we are excited, but we need long-term follow-up data in order to say where
this drug will play a role in the management of patients with mantle cell lymphoma. Also, we need to be aware that sometimes more potent doesn't mean... So yes, more potent in killing the B cells, but I want to emphasize again, most of these patients are elderly populations, and therefore, if we are going to use a potent drug that we are all get excited, we need to look at the, at the safety profile. In terms of mechanism of action, uh, what we, we know uh, is that zunabrutinib seems to be uh, mostly engaged with uh, with, with an enzyme for a prolonged period of time, so also do what we call high occupancy rate, and also high levels in the lymph nodes uh, are seen with zunabrutinib as compared with uh, ibrutinib. 